For some time I've wanted to make a video to show how to use the 1928 American Book of Common Prayer, which you see here, to calculate the date of Easter. I think the next few weekends I'll be busy making Bible reviews. So this seemed like an appropriate time to attempt that. So here we go, the entrance to the Book of Common Prayer. There is a section early on in the book called the calendar. If we turn to the calendar, we will find this section in the March-April time frame. Well, here we are, for instance, in November, and you see the days of the month, and then you'll see letters beside it. The letters beside the days are called Dominical or Sunday letters. Each year, Sunday falls on a different letter. So if we move here to March, you'll see that we have Sunday, tomorrow is uh, Sunday, March the 5th. So our dominical letter this year is A. There is a way of calculating that, which I will show you. If we look farther down on the page, starting with the 21st of March, you'll see a numeral out in front. Uh, 22nd of March has a 14 in front of it. See that here? The uh, 23rd of March has a 3, 25th has an 11. This is called the golden number. There are 19 of these golden numbers, and they're spread across this time period between the 21st of March and the 19th of April. The golden number has to do with the full moon. So in order to calculate Easter, you need to know when the um, spring equinox is, which is around the 21st of March. You need to know when the next full moon occurs, and then you need to know the Sunday after the full moon. So the golden number tells you the full moon, and then the Sunday or dominical letter tells you where to look for the following Sunday. So just a few pages farther on in the prayer book, you'll find tables for finding holy days, and they explain how to find the date of Easter day, which may not be of concern today because you can just Google that for any particular year. But at one time, this is something that a parish priest may have had to do himself. The number is prefixed to the several days. Those are the golden numbers we looked at earlier in the foregoing calendar between the 21st of March and the 18th of April, inclusive denote the days upon which those full moons do fall, which happen upon or next after the 21st day of March, in those years of which they are respectively the golden numbers. Uh, and the Sunday letter next following any such full moon points out Easter Day for that year. All this holds until 2199, after which year the places of these golden numbers will be changed as in hereafter expressed. The reason for that is that that's 19 year cycle of the full moons is only approximate, and these um, these uh, golden numbers will drift to different days on the calendar. So I'll show you an example later on. I picked the year 2222 to use an example. So to find Easter Day, the first thing we do is we look in the first column of the calendar. It's the golden number between the 21st day of March and the 19th day of April for the golden number of the year against which stands the day of the Paschal full moon. Then look in the third column for the Sunday letter. And the day of the month standing against the Sunday letter is Easter day. So the first thing to do is to find the golden number, which they call the prime. You add 1 to the year of our Lord, and then divide by 19. The remainder, if any, is the golden number. But if nothing remains, then 19 is the golden number. So let's try that for 2023. So we saw that our first step is to add 1. So we add 1 to 2023, and we get 2024. The next step is to divide by 19. Our next step, according to the prayer book, is to divide that number by 19. So 19 goes into 2024, 106.5 something times. That's 106 with a remainder of 10. 
the prayer book told us that the golden number is the remainder. So for our year, 2023, the golden number is 10. So next we have to find the Sunday letter and just down on the same page, it explains to us how to do that. To find the Sunday letter for any given year, look for the next preceding hundredth year in the lower part of this table. So they're talking about this portion of the table here and the next preceding hundredth year is here, the year 2000. And for the remainder of the number of the year in the upper part and against the hundredth year under the remainder, you have the Sunday letter. So for the remainder, which is 23, we look over here, here's 23, and then we come down to where 2000 intersects with 23, and we have A, which is what we expected from looking at the calendar earlier. So the Sunday letter for 2023 is A. So to find Easter, we move back a few pages to the calendar. We move to March, and we look for, first, the golden number. We'll come down to the end of March. We do not see the number 10 here. We'll go early in April until we find the number 10. Number 10 is here on the 5th of April. So this is approximately the date of the full moon. I think my calendar shows it as the 6th. But this is the full moon that we use to calculate uh, Easter by finding the next Sunday thereafter. If you remember, our Sunday or Dominical letter was A, and so Easter in 2023 should be on the 9th of April. Of course, I'm talking about Western or um, not Orthodox Easter. Eastern or Orthodox Easter works, uh, the computations work in a different way. So what do you do for a year where the golden numbers are no longer at the right place on this calendar? Well, you have to use another table in the prayer book to find out where they've moved to. So in the next calculation, we'll first calculate the dominical letter for the year 2222, and then we will locate where the uh, golden number for that year. Well, we'll calculate the golden number for that year, and then we'll locate where that golden number has migrated to on the calendar. So the first step, as before, is to calculate the golden number. So if we take 22, 22, we add 1, gives us 22, 23, we divide by 19, we find that the, the, the uh, quotient is uh, 117, there is a remainder of 0, and so the golden number is 19, 19 if there is no remainder. Now we move to the more general tables. These are on page Romanet 56 in the 1928 American Prayer Book. So these are more general than the, the tables we looked at earlier. Because we're looking farther into the future past 2199, we have to find our Dominical or Sunday letter. And the way we do that is we add to the year its fourth part, omitting fractions and also the number which in table one is down here appears at the top of the column wherein the number of hundreds contained in that given year is found. So that may sound a little complicated because of the way it's put in this more archaic English, but for our purposes we're looking at 2222, so the number of hundreds is 22 or 2200. The number that stands at the top of the column is 4. So we want to take 2222 plus a fourth of 2022, omitting any fractions, plus 4. When I follow those instructions, I add a quarter of 2222 minus any fraction that remains to 2222, and then add 4 to that sum, I get 2781. The next step is to divide that number by 7. If there's no remainder, then the Sunday letter is A. But if any number remain, then the letter that stands under that number at the top of the table is the Sunday letter. 
So they're saying use the remainder here, whatever that is, and the letters that stands under the remainder is the Sunday letter for that year. So we take 2781, we divide by 7, we get 397.285, etc. That's 397 remainder 2. So we look in the table that we were just looking at a moment ago for the letter that goes with a remainder of 2. And when we do that, we find that the dominical or Sunday letter for the year 2222 is F. So glancing briefly back at our calendar, we know that for the year 2222, the golden number is 19, and we know that the Sunday letter is F, so we might guess that March the 31st is the right answer. And it turns out that's right, but it's not safe to draw that conclusion in general, because as I mentioned earlier, these golden numbers drift over time we need to make sure that the 19th hasn't drifted past the 31st in the year 2222 to be sure that March the 31st is the right number. The prayer book gives us a table that will show us where that golden number belongs on this calendar in the year 2222. So table 2, we're still on page Romanet 56, it says to find the days to which golden numbers ought to be prefixed in the calendar in any given year of our Lord, consisting of entire hundred years, and in all the intermediate years betwixt that and the next hundred years following, look in the first column of this table. This table is the table that I'll show you just in a moment for the given year consisting of entire hundreds, and against it, under each golden number, you will find the day of the month to which that golden number ought to be prefixed in the calendar. So we're looking for where 19 should go in the calendar, as we just saw a moment ago. Where should golden number 19 go? What date does that belong to? If the number of the day is greater than 20, it's a day of March. If it's less than 20, it's a day of April. So we go over here to the next table, which is called Table 2, the Golden Numbers. We find our 100 years, which is 2200. We're looking at 2222, so it's here. We're looking for a number in this row. The Golden Numbers are given above. We know that the Golden Number for our year is 19, so we come down and we find that in 2222, the 19th goes with the 28th of March. So let's go back at the calendar one more time and take a look. So when the 1928 Book of Common Prayer was published, the golden number of 19 mapped into the 27th of March, and it will continue to do so through the year 2199. But as we just saw in the year 2022, to 22, 19 um, golden number will then move to the 28th of March. And the reason that 31st of April is the right answer for Easter Sunday in the year 2222 is that this 19 hasn't moved down farther, down below the calendar into April. It's still earlier in March than the 31st. So, in 2222, Easter Sunday will be the 31st of uh, March. Well, uh, with that, I will conclude this brief video. Thanks very much for watching, uh, for those, those of you who stayed to the end. And uh, thank you for your time.